So welcome to episode 2 of the BMAT series. In this episode I'll be talking about resources and every single resource that you should ideally be using to try and get the best score possible in the BMAT. Now the resources that I'll be recommending are things that I used in the past but also things that students who are currently sitting the exam have said are really useful. So I hope you too use all these resources because I personally think they're all fantastic. So definitely take a look at each and every one of them. Try and use all of them if possible. First and foremost, it's Medify. I first used Medify back when I was doing the UK CAT and undoubtedly it is one of the best online platforms there are at the moment for entrance exam preparation for medical school. Back in the day, Medify was focused fully on UK CAT, but now they've got a great section on the BMAT as well, with thousands of questions that you can take a look at. One of the best things that I found about Medify was how you could track your progress. I haven't found a site that does this so well so far. The way it analyzes your performance, looking at subject topics that you're doing bad in, is unparalleled. And I found this really useful because it allowed me to very quickly identify key areas that I was weak in, which is extremely important because when you're revising for the BMAT, there's so much to revise, so you want to revise as effectively as possible. The link is down below. Secondly, I think you should get your hands on the Kaplan BMAT booklet. Now, I know a lot of people who've been on the Kaplan BMAT courses, and from what they've said, rather than the actual day course itself, the most useful thing was the booklet. So if you do have friends who've been on the course, ask if you can borrow the booklet for a few days, because it doesn't take more than a day or so to go through the booklet, and you'll pick up quite a few good things from there. I used the Kaplan booklet quite early on in my preparation. I used it to try and get an understanding of what exactly the BMAT was and what each section was about. Next is a new online platform that I've come across. It was started by a fellow Cambridge medic, Ali Abdal, who's now in his sixth year. It's called BMAT Ninja. It consists of a huge bank of questions, both from the official past papers and I think questions that they've written. So back when I was applying, I didn't use BMAT Ninja, so I don't have personal experience of using it, but from what I've heard from students currently, it's a really good resource, so make sure to use it. Next up is the infamous ISC BMAT book. Now this book is known to be extremely useful when preparing for BMAT. I used this back in the day and I think, although the questions are slightly tough, it's an extremely good resource. You want to try and get through all the questions, and for questions you don't understand, the book has got super duper good explanations at the back. Another book that I recommend you use is the Thick BMAT Questions book by Uni Admissions. I personally found that book really good because, again, like the IOC book, it had loads of questions that I could go through. And again, it had pretty good explanations at the back for the questions that I did not understand. Now what's really important when you're revising is that you need to realise you won't get every single question correct. You're going to make mistakes. But it's fine to make mistakes when you revise. So make sure to use all the explanations on all the resources that I'm mentioning. Ideally, you want to understand why you're going wrong, whether you're using the wrong method, whether you've forgotten the equation to use, or whether you've simply forgotten a bit of the science that was involved. So keep that in mind when you revise. Moving on, the next really good resource that I recommend you use is the official BMAT book. It's quite expensive for what it is and for the amount of questions it provides, but I think if you can get your hands on it, it's quite useful. The questions are quite easy in that book, so again, this book is quite useful for the initial stages of preparation, where you're actually getting into the BMAT preparation, kind of getting a feel for what the BMAT is like and what to expect. Next is one of the most important resources, the official past papers. The BMAT consortium have been extremely nice and they've released every single past paper since 2003. There's no better way to prepare for an exam other than doing past papers. But why? Because by doing past papers you can identify your strengths and weaknesses. Then you can work on your weaknesses and try and improve them so that on exam day you will now have a good understanding of those topics and so you can do well. There are past papers in section 1, section 2 and section 3 as well as answer keys so definitely make sure to use the past papers. I recommend that you print them out in A4. When you're doing these past papers I recommend that you print them out and do them in A4. This is because your actual exam will be done with pen and paper. And so I strongly suggest that you get used to writing small calculations or writing out equations on that piece of paper so that you can develop the in-exam technique. Last but not least is the lifesaver resource for section 2, the official BMAT science guide. This is available for free on the BMAT website and it's a collation of all the different bits of science 
from GCSE that you need to know to do well in section 2. So how should you use a CGP guide? When you're doing past papers, you'll come across certain topics that you're unsure about. Once you finish the past paper, go to the CGP guide and read up on that topic that you are unsure about. Write down the equations, write down the key concepts in a piece of paper and try and memorize this. So to summarize, here are the 8 key resources that I think you should definitely use when you revise for the upcoming exam. Medify, the Kaplan booklet, BMAT Ninja, the ISC BMAT questions book, the Uni Admissions BMAT questions book, the official BMAT textbook, the official past papers, and last but not least, the official CGP science guide. So now you've got all your resources, it's time to focus on technique and strategy. It's time to get down to work. Click on to the next episode to hear about my BMAT score as well as my experience of revising for the exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. To keep up with all the latest videos being released in this BMAT series, make sure to click the subscribe button. And if you've got any questions, make sure to ask down below. I'll be more than happy to answer. So take care and keep revising.